Pear on chalky keys. Tap of keys like pear's crisp bite. Keys and fruits unite. Here is how I made a pear keyboard. Now, I know this may be surprising to many of you given my absolutely fly demeanor, but I was once a keyboard nerd. It all started when I was a freshman in college studying the science of computers and came across my first mechanical keyboard on Amazon one night, the Razer Black Widow. Besides annoying the absolute shit out of anyone within a 10-foot radius of me, the keyboard started the beginning of my journey into custom keyboards months later. This is also around when keyboard creators like Teha Types and Squashy Boy started getting popular, so I had lots of inspiration for my own builds at the time. For those of you not too well versed in the custom keyboard world, it's essentially a community where people spend way too much money to make keyboards that sound, look, and feel good. Generally speaking, keyboards consist of these components. Keycaps. This is generally what you first notice on the keyboard and is just the cap of the key. Then you have switches. These are what determine the feel of a key press in tandem with the keycaps, and people weirdly fetishize these. Then we have the PCB. This is the circuit board that the switches are connected to, and this is what wires all of the electronics together. Finally, we have the case, and this is the physical housing of all of the components. There are some other components that I'm omitting here for simplicity, but these are the main ones. Eventually, I stopped modding keyboards because I had too many of them and my wallet was absolutely destroyed after constantly liquidating my life savings to lube my spacebar. Recently, I came across a video by Ben Valak that talked about designing and building an entirely custom keyboard using an open source tool called Ergogen. While I was no stranger to building keyboards, this video stuck out to me because, I mean, just look at this thing. It doesn't even look like a keyboard. It's a pack of Orbit gum. More seriously, the process described in Ben's video was very different from my past experiences. It's a lot more involved and time consuming, but it gives you a lot more flexibility in exchange. Ergogen is an open source platform that allows you to design fully custom keyboards from start to end declaratively using a configuration file. In plain English, that just means that you write a file that describes your keyboard. Defining your configuration file in this way is declarative since we're describing what we want our keyboard to look like, but not necessarily how to make it. The workflow in caveman terms is roughly something like this. Design layout of keyboard generate PCB for keyboard, route PCB for keyboard, write software for keyboard, buy the parts, build a keyboard. The most intriguing parts of this workflow for me were the PCB generation and software parts of the board. I had no idea how keyboards actually worked since the monkey mods that I've done in the past didn't touch PCB routing or keyboard software. So I felt that working on these from the ground up would help me understand how these products work better. Furthermore, I come from a platform engineering background, and we are sexually attracted to configuration files apparently, so the declarative format of Ergogen was pretty appealing to me. Without further ado, let's hop into the build. Actually, before hopping into the build, I needed to figure out what kind of keyboard I wanted in the first place. Coincidentally, I was recommended some videos of macro pad keyboards in my YouTube feed recently, and they looked really cool, so I decided to go with something similar. A macro pad keyboard is just a keyboard with a small number of programmable keys to do whatever you want. In my case, I wanted one so I could toggle between input languages more easily. I speak questionable English, even more questionable Chinese, took Korean in college, and I'm learning Japanese currently. Toggling between these four languages is a huge pain for me at the moment, so I decided this project would be a good solution to this polygyat problem. Now that I knew I wanted a macro keyboard, I needed to visually design my macro keyboard. Given that I needed at least four keys for the languages I wanted to toggle between, I decided to go with this very complicated six-key layout. This would give me two extra keys to spam to satiate my ADHD or play rhythm games like Osu in the future. As for the body of the keyboard, 
Yeah, I don't really think I need to explain the thought process here. Now that I knew what I wanted, it was time to start bringing this monstrosity to life. The first thing I did was start to create my configuration file on the Ergogen web application. The nice part about this is that I could define my key layout while viewing the actual visual changes right in the browser. Creating the layout for the keys was pretty straightforward since I was about as uncreative as you could possibly get with it. Once I finished the 2 by 3 key layout, it was now time for me to draw the outline of my board. You see, with Ergogen you need to define the outline of your board declaratively, which generally means defining the outline through connected coordinate points. This is usually pretty straightforward if you're a normal human being and make keyboards that are simple polygons. In my case, however, I had to make a freaking pair. Initially, I tried to freehand the outline by drawing points one by one, but with my artistic ability, this quickly proved to be a complete disaster, so I had to figure out other options. After a lot of googling, I found this suspicious tool on a website called mobilefish.com that allows you to draw points around an image and then output the coordinates. This was pretty perfect for my use case since it would give me a proportional set of coordinates to base the pear shape off of, which I could then transform and translate within Ergogen until it fit around the key layout. I imported the dark pear into the program and drew some points and got my coordinates. From there, I added these to my configuration file with some variable scaling and offsets and adjusted them until I finally got the pair board. Now that I had the rough layout figured out, I needed to add footprints to the board. Footprints are spots where the actual electronics will go, which include the following. Diodes. These are electric components used to block the flow of current in one direction. Keyboard switch. These are the actual switches that make our keyboard keys functional. When they're pressed, current can flow through them, and that's how we know when a key is pressed. Microcontroller. This is the actual gigabrain of the keyboard, and is where the keyboard software goes. Adding footprints for these was pretty straightforward. The diode and keyboard switches worked out of the box after adding them to the configuration file. The microcontroller footprint was also easy to add, but I did have to adjust the position manually, which took a couple of tries. The view that you are seeing right now is KiCad. Ergogen has the ability to turn your configuration file into a KiCad file that we can use to wire up our board later. This is where the declarative magic is in this whole process. With a single file, we are able to define our entire board. Wowzers. Now that I had a KiCad file with the board on it, it was time to route the board. Before we talk about routing, however, let's discuss something called the keyboard matrix. At a high level, keys on a keyboard are just switches. Usually you can tell when switches are pressed in a microcontroller by wiring the switch to a pin and ground. When the switch is pressed, the circuit is closed and it's something that you can check for by reading the signal on the pin on the microcontroller. Cool, that's straightforward. So we just do that with six pins and six switches, right? Well, we could, but it wouldn't be a very good use of pins. In our case, it doesn't matter too much, but just look at the keyboard in front of you right now. You would need a lot of pins for a standard size keyboard, and most microcontrollers won't have enough. Thus comes the keyboard matrix. The keyboard matrix is a smart scheme for reducing the number of microcontroller pins needed to detect key presses. Instead of giving each key one pin, we designate a pin for each row and column of the keyboard. We can tell which key is pressed by checking which column and row combination pins are hot and then deducing the pressed key from there. For example, if row 0 and column 1 pins are hot, then we know that the key being pressed is the top middle key. This also works when multiple keys are pressed at once. Doing things this way allows us to reduce our pins from 6 pins to 5. This is only a 1 pin reduction in our case, but in larger keyboards this makes a huge difference. Imagine a 5x20 keyboard. Instead of 100 pins, you only need 25. That's 75% less pins. Now that we know what a keyboard matrix is, describing routing is pretty straightforward. Routing is just wiring things up in our circuit according to our keyboard matrix. With Ergogen, you can define which pins on the microcontroller will be designated column and row pins. And from there, you can just open up KiCad and manually start routing these connections. You might be wondering, why can't Ergogen just auto-route these? 
The reason is that it is pretty algorithmic, algorithmically difficult to do this. And also manually routing these is pretty fun. So just do it and shut up. Now that I had the circuit complete, I needed to get this thing produced in China somehow so I could actually hold it in my tiny Asian hands. I exported the circuit as a Gerber file and then sent it to JLC PCB, which I am not affiliated with, by the way. It ended up coming around to $30 for five copies of the board, including shipping and everything, which was not terrible. I was a bit worried they wouldn't accept this strange board shape, but they didn't seem to give a shit, which was great. From there, I just had to wait for it to ship. At this time, I also purchased my keyboard switches, diodes, and keycaps, so I could just jump right into assembly once everything came in. While I was waiting for the PCB, I found out that Ergogen also provides some tooling to help create 3D printable cases for the circuit board using the same exact configuration file. So of course I had to try this. I went ahead and fiddled with the outlines and extrusions until I got a nice case going, then I just printed it on my 3D printer. It was super nice not having to CAD this up myself and just using the Ergogen toolkit directly. Very great for lazy pairs like myself. As I mentioned before, the microcontroller is the giga brain of the keyboard, but right now it is dumb as hell since we didn't install any software on it. To do that, we need to actually create the software by using the QMK firmware GitHub repository and configuring it for our microcontroller model and keyboard. It is pretty similar to Ergogen in that you basically just need to fiddle with some configuration files for your keyboard to get the firmware working. This generally involves defining the matrix pins and the layouts of the keys and then building the firmware using the readme instructions. There are a lot of resources online that explain and walk you through this process a lot better than I could ever so I'll link those in the description. Once I built the firmware, I flashed it onto my microcontroller and then waited for my shit to come in the mail. A few weeks later, all my stuff finally came in the mail. The boards looked really good. I was impressed with JLC PCB's quality. The boards were clean and didn't really have any production mistakes that I could identify at least. Before testing the board, I did the most five head thing I could think of and decided to spray paint the circuit board and the case. This is particularly stupid because if there were any issues with the circuit, I would have to repaint things again. But I didn't really care, so I did it anyways. From there, I moved on to soldering the components onto the board. I actually have a lot of soldering experience from high school and college, but I never had to solder diodes this small before, and it was a huge pain. Once I got the diodes on though, the other components were pretty easy to solder. I then started adding the switches, keycaps, and microcontroller to the board, and bam, we were finally getting somewhere. However, I would very soon realize that I messed up. When I tried finally adding the board to the 3D printed case, it seemed like the pair stem part of the board and the case did not fit. I think this was likely due to the 800 coats of spray paint I added messing up the already extremely tight fit. While I could have reprinted the case and repainted, I decided to just let the stem part of the circuit board hang above the upper perimeter of the case since it didn't really bother me that much. My copium actually thinks it looks slightly better since it gives a 3D feel to the stem. Finally, I added some rubber feet to the bottom of the case so that it wouldn't wobble and voila, we were done. After plugging the macro keyboard in, it pretty much just worked. I configured my keyboard software such that the keys just map to keys 1 through 6 so I could test that the keyboard matrix was functioning properly. Once I verified that this was working, I used a tool called Carabiner to map the keys on the macro keyboard to my language inputs and I was now able to switch languages by touching the pair. I've been using the pair macro keyboard for around a week now and I honestly didn't expect to like it as much as I did. It has made my Japanese study a lot easier since I now had dedicated keys to toggle between languages. Visually, it also just looks really cute on my desk, and it's nice knowing that I can program these keys to whatever use cases I have in the future. Overall, unlike my last phone case video, I would say that this project was actually a decent success. The macro keyboard is pretty useful for me, and I'm going to keep using it until I find a reason not to. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this video. This one was a bit more technical, but I have some other ones planned for the future that are less technical, for better or for worse. If you want to buy one of these pair keyboards, get yourself checked mentally. 
The ErgoGen configuration files and QMK software for this project will be available through my GitHub fork links below. However, if you're going to try this project out for yourself, I'd recommend figuring out exactly what you want and then making a board designed to fit your needs. With that said, pair out.